Your knowledge of scales is only as useful as your ability to know when and where to use them. On today's video, I'm gonna show you guys a way to learn scales that's gonna give you maximum return on your shred investment. Well, hey there kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Every tool that we use has a companion. For hammers, that's nails. For screwdrivers, it's screws. And for chainsaws, it's zombies. And in the world of music, for scales, it's chords. And if you don't know the relationship between your favorite scale and the chords it can produce, you're just never really gonna have a clear idea about when you can use it. And there's an easy way to understand it, and that's what we're talking about today. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today, even for just a buck a month, you're gonna get access to a ton of goodies like bonus lessons, vlogs, backing tracks, downloadable tabs, and so much more. This week, everybody who supports my channel, even for just that $1 a month level, gets a special companion video to go along with this one, showing you guys how to understand another cool and exotic scale and the way that it relates to its chords. So don't delay, sign up today. Thanks. Gear-wise for today's video, I'll be playing my lovely Ernie Ball Luke 3 that I just got. I love this thing, and I'm playing that through the Fractal Audio Axe Effects 3. Okay, so first things first, you gotta start off with a scale. Let's use the A Lydian dominant scale for today's lesson. I chose this one just because it's probably gonna be unfamiliar to some of you guys. It might level the playing field a little bit and uh, just keep it interesting. Plus, I really like the sound of this scale. I'll use it all the time. Here's how to play it in a three note per string pattern. <laughs> cool sound. That's one of the modes of the melodic minor scale, but honestly, don't worry about that for right now. Just imagine that this is a really cool scale that you found in the guitar grimoire or whatever. You like the sound of it, but you don't know when and where to use it. Here's what you're going to do. Everything that you need to know is hidden right there inside of the scale itself, if you know how to look for it. Simply put, scales produce chords. And how you're going to find the most basic kind of chords a scale can produce is like this. Play the first note, skip a note, Play the next note, skip a note, play the next note. So we just played every other note. One, skip, three, skip, five. That yields the basic chord triad that that scale works with or produces. In this case right here, if you know your intervals, you're gonna know that it's producing a root, a third, and a fifth. Those are the ingredients that go inside of any plain Jane major chord. So our A Lydian dominant scale in its most basic harmonization produces an A major chord. That means that anytime I see A major, I could potentially use this scale because you could say that that chord is cut from its cloth, so to speak. Let's see what that sound like. It sounds pretty cool together. You got a couple of interesting twists and turns due to some of the notes that we're finding in that scale, but you can hear that it's speaking the language of that chord. This is how like chord and scale relationships really work. The scale has to speak the language of the chord, or the other way around if you want to look at it that way. But either way, if the chord is saying, I have these notes in it, the scale damn well better have those notes in it, as well as filling in the gaps between them with some pretty interesting stuff. The cool thing about this is every scale can generate chords that are even more harmonically dense beyond just your plain old major chords like what we started with right there. And the way you're going to find these more melodically satisfying chords is to continue that game of leapfrog that we played through the scale earlier, where we played the first note, skip, the third note, skip, the fifth note, skip, and then the seventh note, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if we take those four notes right there and analyze those intervallically, you're again gonna have root, third, and fifth, which was our formula for major chords. But then this note right here, the new note that we added in, if you think about this A right here as being the root of the scale, 
then this note a whole step behind it is a flat seven interval. So that gives us one, three, five, flat seven. That is the formula to generate a dominant chord, which is like a major chord, only it also has that flat and seven added in. Again, if this is a root A, that would be a regular seven. This is a flat seven. Toss that in to get the big funky bluesy sound that we associate with dominant chords. So that means that I could use this Lydian dominant scale against the next A7 that I see in a blues jam or whatever. It sounds like this. Really cool sound, some twists and turns in there, and it works because that chord is cut from the fabric of this scale. Now, if all this stuff about intervals seems a little confusing to you as far as like, how do you know that that's a third? How do you know that that's a five or a flat seven or whatever? The easiest way to get into thinking intervallically is to remember that all intervals are based on the major scale. So if you know the major scale, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, right? And you use that as your basis for intervals. That's a one, that's a two, a three, four, five, six, there's your seven, there's your one. And then you think about all the other intervals as being deviations of that. That's how I came to that conclusion that this was a flat seven back here. Because if you know that this is a regular seven, then we can describe this as being a seven that's been flattened, a flat seven. Think about the other intervals in the scale that way too. The one is the same as the major scale. The two is the same as the major scale. The three is the same as the major scale. Our fourth note in our scale is raised up a half step from the fourth in the major scale. So we would call that a sharp four. One, two, three, sharp four. Fifth is the same, sixth is the same. The seventh is flattened by comparison. And there's our root again. One, two, three, sharp four, five, six, flat seven, one. It's the best way to understand intervals. Just compare it to the major scale and call it what it is. So the cool thing about this too is that we can take that entire scale and form chords that contain any of those intervals in there, okay? What I did just a second ago with the root third fifth and then the one, three, five, seven, that's kind of the standard way to sort of stack up notes from a scale and generate chords. But the reality is, especially if you like those really modal sounds that you hear in like fusion players and stuff, those guys are pulling in other notes that are in that scale. Let's say, for example, that sharp four that we talked about earlier, one, two, three, sharp four. I could use that in my chords as well. I could come up with something that has a really cool sound where it's like an A major. Let's do A major this way. Only it also has that sharp four, that D sharp note. That Randy Rhodes called, right? He wants that chord back. Also, the next one in, uh, what is that, Diary of a Madman. That's another time I could use this scale. See what I did right there? That's got root, there's that flat seven, there's our third, there's that sharp four, and then our E is our five in that case. So this is like a dominant sharp 11, sharp four kind of chord. So anytime that you want to get that kind of weird sound going on, That's at the start of a Perfect Circle song off Mare de Noms. I can't remember which one it is. I'll put it down there on screen. But you've heard that sound before. Really cool sound. I like it a lot. And again, it's okay to use those weird notes that I'm putting in there because I know a scale that goes with it. Here's what that would sound like with that weird dominant sharp 11 sound and this Lydian dominant scale going on over the top of it. It's really cool. I saw an interview a while back with the late great Alan Holdsworth where he was talking about the way he thinks about the relationship between scales and chords. He said he thinks about scales as being like members of a family that are sitting around a table, right? So imagine you have a seven person family all sitting around a table together. A chord is formed when like three or more of them stand up at the same time. It could be any of them. It could be you, your mom, your dad, your sister. 
It could be your dad, your sister, your crazy Aunt Judy, and your mom. It doesn't matter. It's like any combination of those uh, people sitting around the table can stand up and form a chord. That's how you should think about the way that scales can generate chords. Look at this as being the table and think about what would happen if a certain random assortment of those people stood up. Maybe you got the root, the flat seven, the ninth, the sharp 11 in there. It's a cool sound. And again, if you know the scale that goes with it, you can solo over it. Now, the thing about this is, is that, you know, we're obviously not all fusion players who are playing over like chord-based vamps. A lot of us are rock and metal guys who play against riffs in our soloing. Now, you should also be on the lookout for what intervals are in a riff and how that can associate with a scale that you know. So in other words, like let's say I had a riff that was based around, we'll use A again right here. And let's say the riff had some of those cool intervals in there. So again, if you're thinking about the intervals involved, you'll notice that had our one, two, three, sharp four and five in there, as well as that lowered seventh down here. All those things are just permission for me to use my new favorite scale against it. Again, as long as what you're playing over melodically agrees with the scale you're using, you're good to go. But you have to know those core relationships between the scale that you just learned and what it can produce if you want to know how to use it effectively. Now, I've been kind of focusing on the chord that you can produce off of the first note of a scale. In reality, any of those seven notes in a scale can produce their own chord. So you can make entire chord progressions out of a scale too. And you're just gonna use that uh, hopscotch kind of approach again to find out what chords a scale can produce. So like off the first note, remember how we skipped, played, skipped, played, and that formed major? We'll do that from the second note now. Skip, play, skip, play. That gave us a B major triad, root third, fifth. Off of the third note, Play, skip, play, skip, play. That gave us a C sharp diminished triad right there. It's kind of a weird one. And uh, try that yourself and figure out what other chords this scale can form or whatever your favorite scale is. Go through and do this hopscotch approach and figure out what kind of chords you could form out of it. And again, that's going to give you a great idea of when you can use your new favorite scale. Do this with every single scale that you learn. You always need to have that light bulb moment of seeing a chord and being like, I know a scale that makes that chord. I can use it right here. You gotta build those associations up. And the best way to do that is by learning a scale and then figuring out what chords it can make the way that I showed you today. But I guarantee this is gonna make all of your time that you've spent learning scales way more effective than if you're just mindlessly memorizing patterns out of the guitar grimoire or whatever. Just remember, every time that you learn a whole bunch of scales, but you don't learn what chords they produce, it's no different than going to Lowe's and buying every brand and size of hammer that they have, but having no idea what a nail is. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it gave you some good insights on the relationship between chords and scales. If you have any questions about anything, be sure to put those in the comment section below and I'll get to those as soon as I can. If you want to get even more out of this lesson, consider supporting my channel and my puppy dogs over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. In the bonus video that goes along with this one, I'm going to show you guys this procedure with a Phrygian dominant scale, everybody's favorite, you know, frilly shirt Ingve scale. So that way you guys get some ideas about when and where you can use that guy as well. So. Be sure to sign up today, even for just a $1 a month level. It's going to get you access to that video and a ton of other stuff. So don't delay. Sign up today. Thanks for watching and click and subscribe. Be sure to ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. And be sure to get that guitar in your mitts and do some work on this stuff. Learn more about your favorite scales by learning about what chords they can make. As for me, I'm going to get away from this thing and grab some lunch. Less clicking, more picking.